Surely on Times Radio, bringing you our regular monthly focus group. James Johnson from JL Partners, former number 10 pollster, is with us. Uh, this month we are speaking to SNP voters. They backed the SNP in 2019. They're now undecided. James, let's turn our attention now to the opposition, if you like. Let's look at the Scottish party leaders first of all. This is what the group had to say about Douglas Ross, the Conservative leader in Scotland. Red card, red card. Unimpressionable. Small male opportunistic. Uh, non-existent. Stick to refereeing because he is non-existent. He's just, he's another one. It just likes to hear the sound of his own voice. Lackluster. Snide. Evil. He's a bit pantomime, bit melodramatic. In fairness to him, I believe he is a sincere Conservative. I can't say that about Anna Sarwar. I don't think Anna Sarwar sincerely believes in the things that he says. As a leader, I don't have any faith at all. OK, well, as I've introduced Anna Sarwar into the conversation, let's also hear what the group had to say about the Scottish Labour leader, Anna Sarwar. Dentist? I think that was his job before he was a politician, but that's the first thing that comes into my mind. I don't like him at all. It's just SNP this, SNP that. He's just, oh, he's just, I just don't like Scrapper. Unlikable. Insincere. Not likable. A loser. Fraud. I just think he's false. He just opposes the SNP. I have no idea what his actual ideas are. But apart from that, they love them both. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, they're very similar, I suppose, the, 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 the views of them. They seem to be interchangeable. They're not particularly more pro or anti um, the other. Yeah, you got a sense that any politician that wasn't supportive of independence would have got a similar yeah. verdict from these voters, which is completely fair, right? You know, that, that's, their, that's their sort of key, key thing that they're looking for um, in the long term or medium term, at least. You wouldn't expect, if you were Douglas Ross, to do well with this group. Um, uh, he's conservative. Um, yeah. This group tends to be quite anti-conservative. Uh, evil, I think you heard there, yeah. um, uh, which is pretty harsh. And Asawa, you know, equally pretty harsh. Um, you know, uh, they, they, they didn't fall in love with him. I think this is the group in a general election where you're not really thinking they're necessarily going to go vote Labour or vote Conservative. So I think it's a huge surprise. But it is a group who perhaps might not turn out if they didn't feel really energised. So let's find out what they actually think about the Westminster leaders then. Uh, let's kick off with what the group of SNP votes from 2019 have now and decided this is what they thought about Rishi Sunak. Rich. Yeah, privileged. Elitist. Elitist as well. Rich. He's a money snake. Privileged. I don't think he's relatable. They're not necessarily understanding how people's lives are, their struggles. As he's come in, you know, he's been very proactive on different fronts, but I think he's out of touch. You know, initially I thought he was an all right guy and he was coming out with certain sound bites. It sounded like he wanted to help. But then when push came to shove, he just was out of touch with what the majority of people are dealing with. It's just one big way of skimming money from the the people to to get it into their pockets and he's doing a great job of that. He's clever, you know, he's better than, certainly better than what there was there before, but, you know, you can see quite clearly that it's all just about money for him. Rishi Sunak, like it or lump it, is good at what he does. So fair play, same way Thatcher was good at what she did. Douglas Ross is incompetent and he's like a lackey to his Westminster kind of masters and I think that's why he's more detestable. I just think he's clever at what he does and good at what he does. The only thing is he's off for the money. Wow. I mean, the rich thing really, you know, gets cut through. And it's interesting whether the SNP have just landed that message better than, than actually Labour and Keir Starmer uh, have managed. Before we, we come on to that, let's just hear actually, for the sake of completeness, this is what the group had to say about Labour leader Keir Starmer. Spineless. Doesn't get his point across enough. Bland. Cowardly. Bogus. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> Bogus mental. Bland. He shouldn't be a politician, he's just... Because he is bland. Kind of just sums up Labour, really. There's there's not that much of a fight against the Tories. I just always felt like he was in the background, gibbering on, but nothing that actually made sense or meant anything. Wish was she for me? Just not doing enough, basically, to, to make people listen. I think he's passive. I think he had arguably the best chance of, of any Labour leader with the mistakes that Boris Johnson was making and the Tory party have made over the last couple of years and he smashed the ball over the bar from two yards. Some of the things he says about Scotland are derogatory. He's out of touch with Scottish politics, Scottish people. He seems like he would be terrible for, for Scotland and most probably England as well. What worries me is he changes his mind and that's why I keep bogus because... You know, he's, he'll say something and then he'll change it. So, James, 
Keir Starmer, if he wants to become Prime Minister, certainly with a majority government, needs to win in Scotland. What's striking is they've got much stronger views about Keir Starmer than lots of the swing voters in England that we normally have on the focus group. We say, I don't know much about him. He seems a bit wet or whatever. This is strong views. They're just not very complimentary. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. And I think what you see here for both party leaders is almost the worst views of them in England, sort of amplified and yeah, taken yeah. on board by, by these people who obviously don't look much like either of them. But it is interesting. The view of Keir Starmer is not just a shrug. It is actually very consciously negative. And um, the big question is, is what does that do to mm. these kind of voters in a Scottish general election? Because if they think that a Labour government is on the cards and actually they're not that happy with that, does, you know, what does that do to their vote? And, yeah, I, yeah. and I don't know the answer to that question yet. You know, does that mean that they're more likely to turn out and actually vote SNP because they don't necessarily want that to happen? Um, does it dampen the attempt of Labour to turn it into a kick the Tories out election? Yeah, get the Tories possibly? out. Possibly. So, let stops being a, a strong rallying call if people really don't like Keir Starmer. Let's hear now what happened when you asked them to specifically choose. If you had to choose between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer, this is what the group said. Rishi, uh, he, he steadied the boat with everything that happened with Liz and, and Boris prior to that. Rishi, because I think the other one would be tragic. He's just no boat Scotland's back at all. I would actually say Keir Starmer just because whether we agree or disagree, he does represent a change. I would say Rishi. I do. I think he's the best person to lead. I think I've got to say Keir just to get them out and I for a change. I'd say Rishi just because I do slightly like him a wee bit, more no particular reason, because I think, to be honest, most of them are all the same. I would say Rishi, he's a snake, but we know he's a snake. Keir's pretending not to be a snake. Yeah, I would say Rishi because you, you know what you're dealing with and it's an easy opposition to have, you know, because they're so colourfully against the things that, that we kind of want. So I think Labour will win, but I don't think we'll have this big thumping majority that the probably people thought they would have had six months ago. So I made that about 6-2 in favour of Rishi Sunak. I mean, some letting it slip that actually it's because essentially having an evil, nasty, out-of-touch Tory Prime Minister in Westminster is not bad if what you're aiming for is independence. Yeah. But yeah. others are also just saying they think he'd just be better. Yeah, there was a lot of genuine thoughts in there. I mean, genuinely shocking. I mean, not shocking, but surprising. That is not what you would have expected. And certainly some of the commentary around what's happening in Scotland and how this is a huge moment for Keir Starmer. He's going to come back and Labour are coming back. Yeah. This is this is our defence of doing these focus groups, right, Matt? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, voters are not... They don't subscribe, prescribe to the rules that, you know, yeah. we sometimes set for them. They, you know, these are SNP voters. They're undecided. They're very loyal to Nicola Sturgeon, yet they don't really want a referendum and they prefer Rishi Sunak to Keir Starmer as PM but they also think there's a media conspiracy against them. You know, this, this is a nuanced way of looking at the world from these, from these people. And I think that reflects some of what we have seen in the other focus groups in England. Um, we always get accused of, you know, saying, oh, everyone loves Rishi Sunak compared to Keir Starmer. Um, and, you know, oh, that doesn't reflect the polls. But actually amongst these swing groups yeah. in Scotland as well as England, there is this sense that actually maybe Rishi Sunak might make the better Prime Minister. And that's going to be really interesting for what that means to the dynamics in a general election. And that's where it, better the you know versus time for change. That it, it, Who can frame the election uh, best? That's, that's, that's going to be the choice in Scotland as well as everywhere else. Yeah, and if you're a Conservative Party strategist, either in Westminster or in Scotland, when Boris Johnson was leader, they were brutal on Boris. And I think we did one, um, I can't remember exactly, mid-2021, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were SNP voters who didn't want a referendum. Yeah, yeah. and it was they were really savage on Boris. And they were yeah. saying, you know, he was it was clear that they were pushing him to independence, uh, pushing them to independence, and very clear that it was, they were pushing them to SNP. You could almost see a world where some of those might even have lent a vote to stop Boris. They hated him that much. I don't think hate is too strong a word yeah. there for this audience. Um, with Rishi Sunak, that has gone. And like I say, I don't think we can say for sure what that means right now, but it certainly means that there is less of that mobilisation to kick the Tories out, which you might have seen had Boris Johnson gone into another election for the, for the Conservatives. Yeah, somebody in number 10 just needs to draw up a post of better the snake you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, is that, that's a campaign line if I've ever heard one. But isn't, isn't I think that, that that quote, I think, tells you a lot about how people perhaps potentially view Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer in England as well. You know, there is this sense that at least with Rishi Sunak, you know what you're getting. Yeah. With Keir Starmer, they still don't know what it is. And actually, that used to just get a shrug and a, oh, we don't know what we think of Keir Starmer. It's now, we don't know what he thinks and we really don't like that. And yeah. if Starmer can't or, turn that around... Uh, I mean, then you start throwing into a bit of, he's changed his position on 
whether it's the gender question or he, you know, nationalisation or things that you thought you knew about him turn out that that's not what he's about either. That sort of starts feeding into it as well. But it's genuinely fascinating, James. And we should, uh, as I've heard with these focus groups, anything which challenges my assumptions, the assumptions of listeners and the, and the assumptions of Twitter is all good. James, lovely to see. Uh, that was James Johnson there with this month's Times Radio Focus Group.